All right, this morning we are talking to a provincial leader of Democratic Alliance in the Free State, um, Dr. Roy Junglesen, but who prefers to be called Roy, about what happened at, in Metsimaholu um, yesterday, which was on a Tuesday. Um, Metsimaholu local municipality, a former mayor, Jeff Zwan, or I can say mayor, was um, voted out um, following a vote of no confidence during a council meeting in Zamdela by at least 31 councillors. Um, your reaction to that um, leader and what could have happened there? We were also told that DA walked out of that council meeting. Yes, well, we got a notice of council meeting. Our councillors attended the meeting. They did send a letter to the speaker beforehand indicating that they were concerned about the legality of the meeting. But um, during the meeting, the DA Mayor, um, um, Councillor Jeff Zwane, stood up and requested that he be given an opportunity, um, given the allegations against him, to defend himself and call witnesses. Um, the Speaker of the Council said that they're not going to allow him to call a former municipal manager. Now, what happened prior to this is the ANC EFF majority used their majority in that council because we were running a minority government to remove a former municipal manager and other officials and replace them with people who they wanted in those positions specifically so that monies could be paid out to a specific company which the, the previous officials refused to do and which the DA government um, objected to and refused to do. Um, subsequent to that, they did start paying out money. The Democratic Alliance went to court and got an, an interdict to prevent them from paying out any further funds to this company because we are of the opinion that the ANC wants control of Metsimaholo because its finances are sound, they have no ESKIM debt, and they want to plunder this municipality for election purposes in the run-up to the 2024 local government election. So um, during the meeting when the mayor said that, or when the speaker said that the mayor cannot um, call his, that specific witness, the DA said, well, there's no purpose in staying there because the ANC and EFF are going to use their majority to remove the mayor. And they left the meeting um, indicating that they're not going to give the meeting any more credibility. Mm. Um, well, we, we've seen in the city of Johannesburg whereby a mayor was removed. A question of legality was also brought there by DA. After that, we've seen court cases um, and also the mayor was um, given her seat back. Um, is this your plan as the DA in Metima Hall or Free State to go to court and um talk about this matter that happened yesterday because we are speaking about issues of legality um that has to do with that council meeting right yes the demo the democratic alliance isn't just going to give up a government very easily so we are going to look at the legality of council meetings and we will be getting legal opinion and based on our legal opinion that we receive we will then determine what strategy to follow further. But if um, we remain outside of government in Metsimaholo, we will obviously play the role which we're very good at, and that is being an effective opposition and holding the ANC-run government accountable. But what we learn from these situations is that minority governments are not ideal. Um, we would prefer that the voters give a single party um, a majority so that the governments are more stable. And if the Democratic Alliance had a majority in Metsimaholo, um, this situation wouldn't have occurred and Metsimaholo would have benefited from the DA's experience in government and a DA government. And that government was on the right track. It was in the process of improving the services in Metsimaholo, the financial situation in Metsimaholo, um, and 
it's unfortunate that the citizens won't benefit from that. And I must say that um, our government received a huge amount of pushback from the ANC in that municipality. We were working with, a, at times, a very hostile administration. Um, we were experiencing sabotage of our government and our initiatives within the municipality. And obviously, if you're in a minority government, your opposition, which in this case is the ANC EFF, can at any time implement decisions in council and remove you at any time. So it's not an ideal situation having minority governments in place and the voters will have to look at that and decide which parties they want to support in future and make sure that those parties receive a clear majority. Good. Uh, Doctor, I'm listening to you. You are mentioning all these positive and good things that um, you believe that your party has done for the municipality. But what could have been the reason behind this um, motion of no confidence? Do you think it has everything to do with service delivery, corruption, or it is just a, a political um, approach by the ANC? Let's look at the three states as a whole. Let's look at municipalities, local government municipalities in the three states. Sure. All of them have a huge escrow debt except Netsimaolo. Their financial administration is in a mess except Netsimaolo. Services delivery has completely collapsed in most of them regarding water, sewerage, electricity. In Metsima, all things look very different. We're not, it's not without its challenges because we took over from an ANC-run administration, but it's still a lot better than other municipalities in the free state. People have water in their taps, they've got electricity outside of load shedding, and we're working very hard to improve the sewerage and refuse situation in Metsima, So things are better in Metsima, but the ANC wants to get hold of that municipality so that they can plunder it because the reasons why other municipalities are have collapsed and service delivery isn't taking place is because the finances of those municipalities have been plundered through the ANC's cater deployment policy. And Metsima always in a different situation. And obviously the ANC want to get their hands on the only municipality that they don't have access to to plunder and that is the local Metsima Olo municipality. We do also run Fazile Darby, but Fazile Darby is a district municipality, not a local municipality that's responsible for basic services on the ground. Um, we did go to court to stop what we regard as an illegal uh, payment by the municipality to a specific contractor in that municipality. And at this stage, we got managed to get an interdict to prevent the municipality and those officials who were replaced, who were put in by the ANC, replacing the other officials that the DA had um, from paying out further payments to that company. So we're trying to prevent plundering, we're trying to improve it. And obviously the ANC needs election funds and they're going to target the one place that they haven't been able to plunder and destroy in the last two years. I'm sure that from time to time you get reports, obviously, um, from leaders who are leading in municipalities representing your political party, DA. Last year in o October, which was 2022, your leader, um, Jeff Swan, who was the executive mayor in Metimahul, was accused of a security scandal tender whereby it is alleged that he appointed his bodyguard and driver as the, a person of conduct for a security tender at Metsima Hall. Do you have any idea of uh, that particular report and what could have happened there? Yes, the ANC also used that yesterday as part of their motion against Mayor Zwani. And sure. what happened there is a security company had to be appointed by the municipality. There appeared at that time to be no one in the municipality who had the necessary background to um, to run that contract and the appointment of that contract. And the municipal manager in the municipality appointed a security person in the office of the mayor to do that. 
But then I just want to emphasize that the mayor doesn't appoint people. The municipal manager does that. Mm. So um, we contested that and said that it wasn't the mayor who appointed the person. It was the municipal manager. And if it was done incorrectly, it must be investigated, like all other things. But um, people are also innocent until proven guilty, even that municipal manager. And the ANC tried to use that to crucify the municipal manager and and the mayor during that time. But um, in our municipalities, we give our mayors and our MMCs training, and um, we ensure that they don't get their, their, themselves entangled in municipal issues that should be the job of the administration. And in this case, um, yesterday's council meeting, the, the mayor actually requested that they call in that municipal manager so that he could cross-question him and, and get the facts out regarding the allegations that he was involved. But the speaker would not allow that. So it's, they said they're not going to allow that former municipal manager to appear in front of the council and be cross-questioned by the mayor, which is also very suspicious. Why don't they want to allow that? Mm. Um, Dr. Roy, I, I want to let you go on, on the last point or last question, but um, I'm one of the journalists who actually broke that story of a security tender and also had an opportunity to get views of the residents on the ground, especially in Zamdela, Sasolbek. Um, and also one of the things that we get from the people that you call your voters, um, it's that you are presenting your party fairly enough in a good manner, positive as well, but there are people who still believe that some of your leaders are not as holy as you preach as DA. Because you'll understand that I hear your point when you say that the municipal manager is the person who appointed the security guard or the driver, not the mayor. But with the influence of the mayor in the municipality, the mayor obviously became aware of this appointment because he has a relation with his bodyguard, which is a professional one. And when he became aware of this appointment, did he see anything wrong with appointing his bodyguard for a security tender, which he could influence as the executive mayor because he has a relationship with this bodyguard who was appointed by the municipal manager. This is why many people believe that Zwani had an influence on this appointment. Is it fair to think that he could have stopped the appointment or he could have at least questioned the appointment is there anything wrong in appointing a bodyguard and a driver of the executive mayor to be a contact person for a security tender we as a party when we heard about this immediately contacted the mayor and said to him that we do not believe that the appointment of someone in the mayor's office which are political appointments um is is um, a sound practice. So um, we, we basically said to him that we don't want political appointees to be involved in these administrative issues. Sure. And um, if it happened, it is wrong and it should be corrected. Um, and he did inform us that it was not him that appointed, but, but the municipal manager. But we also advised him at the time to please from being involved in these kinds of issues which could put him in a bad light and the party in a bad light because one of the things that we pride ourselves on is good, clean, sound governance and administration and we're not going to allow um, things like this to jeopardize that. All right. Um, Dr. Wyatt Junkinson, um, thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for speaking to us. We'll speak to you again once you have pronounced yourself on the legal advice that you would get regarding this um, removal of the mayor in Metsimaholo. Thank you very much um, for the interview. We look forward to talking to you again on this issue. All right.